Side note, um, it's going to be an amazing weekend next week, so bring somebody, all right? Um, this, uh, this message is going to be divided into two, so it's going to be divided this week and, and next, uh, the next couple weeks I'll pick up where we left off because I believe God wants to speak a doorway to a miracle. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 17. The Bible says like this, Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shunem, where he was, <clears throat> where he where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by that he would turn there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room in the wall, on the wall, and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. Lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and turned into the upper room and laid down there. Then he said to... Uh, Gehazi, his servant, called the Shumanite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him and he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my people. So he said, what then is it is to be done for her? Then Gezahi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then she said, then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elijah had told her. That's the word of the Lord for today. Amen. I believe today's the day for miracles. Let's try that one more time. I believe today is a day for miracles. Oh, I'm going to preach today. I believe today is a good day to see a miracle happen in our lives. Somebody be believe that with me today. Take one of your hands, put it over your chest, and repeat after me, please. Say, eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive and a mouth to confess all of the good things that Christ already prepared for me. If you're ready to receive what's yours today, clap your hands one more time before you take your seat. Please take a seat. First thing I heard from the Holy Spirit is you need to know today that God is in the business of blessing. God is in the business of blessing. And if you're here today, if you're watching online, if you're in a connect group somewhere, if you're somewhere and you're listening to what is happening in this moment, you need to know that God wants you to experience how good he is. You're here today because, as you see, I'm a good news preacher. There's enough bad news. In case you haven't noticed, just turn on the TV, unplug your phone, turn on your phone. There's enough bad news happening all over the world. The, the economy is dropping. Uh, logistics is dropping. There's, there's, there's wars. There's, there's, there's rumors of wars. There's, there's sin. Uh, there's uh, so many things happening. But I, I believe that the Word of God is true when he says that where sin abounds, grace overabounds. 
Oh, I wish I had a church this morning. In other words, what God says is if there's bad news, there's more good news coming than the bad news you've heard. So maybe you received a doctor's notice. Maybe you received a pink slip. Maybe things aren't happening the way you wanted them to happen. I'm here to let you know God brought you here so that you can hear that he wants you to experience his goodness, his grace, his favor, his blessing. God's not waiting to punish you. God's actually waiting to release blessing from heaven. Do I got a witness and anybody here ready to experience God's good? Come on, let's stir it up in here. I need somebody's faith to stir it up. Believe that God is too good for him to be punishing you. He's too good for him not to show you how good he is in your life. God wants you to experience his goodness. God wants you to experience his goodness. The Bible teaches us that there was a woman, there was a Shunammite woman. Uh, the Shunammite woman lived in the city of Shunem, and she was good. She was good. She was good. Bible says she was set up. This is my interpretation, but that's what the Bible is saying. She was set up. She had a good husband. She had a little bit of money. She had some influence in the city. She was good. And the Bible says that every time Elijah would walk by that city, she would pursue and insist that he would stay at her house and eat. He was, she was looking for, for a way to honor the man of God. She knew that he was a man of God. She knew that he possessed anointing she knew who he was and because she knew who he was she wasn't really looking for anything from him but she was looking for ways to honor him you know I think that God loves people who desire to honor him even if you don't get your way sometimes come on I believe we got to start stop treating God like he's the genie in a bottle if you rub him the right way, he'll give you three wishes. Like, we've got to stop doing that to God and just pursue him for who he is. He is God Almighty. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, any sons and daughters here looking for ways to honor their father? The Bible says that she consistently was looking for him to see, to be in that place. And, and the end result, we're, we're, I want to talk about the end result, but then I want to talk about about how it, she got the end result. The end result is that she got something in, that was so deep in her she didn't, even, she didn't even talk about it. But how many of you know, how many are grateful that God knows the desires of your heart and even the things that aren't spoken sometimes, the things you, you, you don't have the courage to talk about? I'm, I'm here to let you know God's going God's gonna to answer some prayers that he, you thought you forgot about them. You thought God forgot about them. You thought some people forgot them. God hasn't forgotten about them today. I'm here to let you know God's going to answer some prayers today. Oh, I wish that somebody believed me. I wish somebody believed the word of God today. God's going to answer some prayers today. And the Bible says that this woman, every time Elijah was look, it was walking by, she, she wanted him to come eat in the house. And, and so the first thing that you and I must do to experience, experience the blessing and the favor of God is this. Please listen to me. I'm going to do a little teaching and then we'll get to some preaching, okay? The first thing you and I must do to experience the blessing and the favor of God, number one, you must desire the presence presence of God. You must desire the presence of God. You know, this, this is important because one of the things that I believe God does in our life is he changes our desires. The more we pursue him, the more we read his word, the more we pursue his presence, he changes our desires. And when we taste and see how good he is, we desire more of him and less of us. When my wife and I were dating, um, uh, we, she introduced me to like a lot of different types of foods. And one of the foods that I didn't like at that time was Vietnamese food. The moment I would walk into a Vietnamese restaurant, the smell of the basil, the aromas, I was like, oh, how could you? And 
what, what, ha- what ended up happening is we, we ended up going to try it for the first time. And I said, okay, well, you know, I, I, I can eat a little soup. And so we ate some soup and I said, it was all right. It, it ain't, you know, it ain't pozole, you know, but, but, it's, but it's all right. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? It, it ain't pozole, but it's all right. And so I tried it. And what ended up happening is that about a week later, as I was driving by, I drove by the restaurant that we were at, my taste buds kind of opened up. I got that little smell again, and I said, hmm, maybe I should try it again. So I went in there, tried it again. I just want to let you know, I'm like hooked on that stuff now. Because when you've tasted something that opens up your taste buds, you no longer just drive by, you desire it and you crave it. And this is why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And when you've tasted how good he is, I can't just drive by church. I got to come in. I, I can't just... I just, I can't just be with him on Sundays. I need him on Monday. I need him on Tuesday because my spiritual appetite has changed. One of the things, come on, one of the things that changes as I pursue God's presence is that he changes my desires. I used to desire to sleep in on Sunday, but he's been too good. So now I get up early to make sure I can get to the house of God. I used to want to just do my own thing on a Sunday, and, but I, he's been too good to me for me to just lay back and, and hold back. No, no. When I've tasted and I've seen how good he is, I crave his presence. I desire his presence. One of the things you and I must do in order to get God's blessing is understand that, that our desire must change in order to receive what God has for me because you and I cannot have the blessing without the blesser understand that there are many people that want the blessing but they don't want the blesser they want Jesus as Savior but they don't want Jesus as Lord they they want they want the hand-me-downs from heaven but they're not willing to seek after him and prostrate themselves and seek after God and and God is saying in order for you to get the blessing you need to go after the blesser but because if you got the blesser you'll have everything access to everything that you need I'm praying that God changes your desires today as a matter of fact the Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 27 verse 4 He says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life. Why? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Somebody in your family has to say, we're not going to serve God just on Sunday. I cannot let him pass me by on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday. His desire is to be in the presence of God. Come on, how many have tasted and seen how good God is? We must desire God's presence. You have to desire His presence. You're not desiring the stuff. You're desiring His presence. And when you desire His presence, everything else comes along with it. The Bible says that after some times that the man of God would come. And now, this is important for you to know because in, in, the, in the Bible times, uh, Elijah, the prophet of God, he was a representation. He re- represented the voice and the word of God. He represented the, the, the presence of God on earth. He was God's microphone. He was, he was the one that God would speak through and the people and the nations would hear what he had to say. So this woman was, was actually not just desiring Elijah to come eat. She was desiring the presence of God to dwell in her house. Do you understand what I mean? It was, it was the presence of God that she was desiring in her home. 
And the truth was that she didn't need anything from him. She was just looking for ways to honor him. Man, could we raise a generation of people that don't ask for anything but just look for ways to honor? I believe that when we honor, we have access to things our hearts desire. And so as she was looking for ways to honor, she says to her husband, hey, um, you know, we saved a little money up. Uh, can we build him a room for him to stay there? And, and the Bible says that her and her husband came into an agreement like, we, sh we should build him a little room. Let's, let's get him a room upstairs and we'll put a chair and a, and a, and a, and a and a table and, and a bed there and a lamp so that he could that he could be there and so literally she was she was making room for the presence of God to dwell in her home I want to ask you a question what are you making room for in your home what are you making room for at your house we make room for a lot of things but I believe God is looking for families husbands and wives children to say, God, we make room for a lot of things, but we're going to make room for you. What does that look like? That looks like God being in your schedule. That looks like God being integrated into the things that, of your agenda. And, and I know you've got your agenda all the way up to the end of the summertime already. I know you do. Some got it all the way to October. You're crazy. But it's all right. My question to you is, are you making room for the Holy Spirit to dwell in that place. The Bible says that she desired not just for him to pass by, she now desired for him to dwell there. You see, I believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to go from just being an experience for you to encounter him. He wants you to be a dwelling place for him. The Bible says that she she talked to her husband and they built him a room with a bed and a lampstand and, and a table and a chair so that he can sleep, he can eat, and he could study and he could do what he had to do there in that home. Number two, if you're here today, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he wants you to make room for him to dwell. He wants to dwell in your life and in your heart. Because you cannot access the favor of God if you're ghosting the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I heard that from, from one of my kids this, today, like, they're ghosting us. And I was like, what does that mean? It, it, it means they're like hiding, they don't want you to see or, and I said, oh, and the Holy Spirit said to me, there's a lot of people that go, ghost the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and you ignore him. And, and, you, and you put him aside and you, and, and you don't listen when he speaks. But I believe God is looking for men and women who are saying, no, God, we're making room for you. We're making room in our home. We're making room in our, in, our, in our marriage. We're making room in our family. We're making room for the Holy Spirit to dwell in our lives. The Bible says that he made room for the men of God. Once she had made the room for him, the Bible says that Elijah comes to the house now. And when, when he sees what they built for him, the Bible says that his heart was so impressed by it that it came to the point where now Elijah speaks to the family and speaks to her and says, hey, you have been so honorable to us. You have been so kind to us. Every time we come, you feed us. And now you built me a place of residency. And this is where everything changes. The Bible says that now Elijah speaks to her and says, what can I do for you? You see, many people are looking to always ask God for something. But when you honor, I believe heaven says, what can heaven do for you now? Oh, you're not hearing me today. 
I believe that when we honor the Holy Spirit when he speaks, I believe that when we make room for the Holy Spirit when he comes in, I believe that when we honor God with being obedient and doing what we've got to do, but when, when, we, when we honor God, the Holy Spirit then replies and says, what can I do on your behalf? What can I, this is what the Holy Spirit is saying at our family day. Today I'm asking you, what can I do for your family? Today I'm asking you, what can I do for your marriage? Today I'm asking you, what can I do for your children? Today I'm asking you, what can I do for your, for your finances? What can I do for you? I believe that there's somebody in this place today. You've honored God with everything you've had. You've, you've laid down your life and now the Holy Spirit is saying, now I'm going to work on your behalf. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open unto you. Man, you clapping like, 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 a, like I said I scored an A on a test. I'm telling you, the heavens are opening up. The Spirit of God is speaking. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Elijah said, what can I do for you? And then the Shunammite woman, she says, she says, man, I'm good. Tell the person next to you, I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm good. You know, you know what that reminded me of? Of like when we walk into church and then we, we, we speak like our church language. You know, Christians got a church language, right? Like, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored. You know what I'm saying? All right, half of you know what I'm talking about. How you do? Pastor, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But the truth is, the Holy Spirit's asking, how you really doing? The Holy Spirit said, you, I'm, I'm asking you because I want to release a miracle in your life, but, but you keep saying you're good. And if you can just be honest for a moment, I can touch the areas of your life that need to get touched. I can answer the prayers that you've been so long desiring. How are you? How are you doing? Holy Spirit, I am not good. I smile and it's, it, I'm a little messed up right now. How are you doing? If you ask me today how I'm doing, I'm going to let you know. I'm on two hours of sleep. My head is kind of hurting. But we preaching the word of God. And we're going to do what we got to do. God is good. And I believe God's going to restore my rest tomorrow. So I understand that there's moments where we want to smile, but it hurts to smile. And the Holy Spirit is asking somebody, how are you really doing? This lady said, I'm good. Elijah's like, do you need me to talk to like the city or something? I can, he said, she goes, man, I dwell among my people. In other words, I have, influ I'm an influencer. I got it. We, we, we're good. And as she walked away, the servant, Gehazi, said, huh, you know, I noticed something, man of God. I noticed that her walls are, are, are really clean. There's no writing on the walls here. You're going to catch it in a little bit. There's no Legos across the living room. I notice that this house is real clean. They ain't got kids here. All the parents, I was trying to help you, man. I noticed it's really quiet in here. There's no crying, nobody's fighting. For the TV remote, nobody's fighting. It used to be the TV remote. Not everybody's fighting for the phone. Not, nobody's fighting for the phones. I notice they don't have any children. Elijah says, I got it. Call her back. She comes back. Gehazi, Gehazi said, uh, shouldn't my woman come back? He wants to, he's not done. Comes back. And the Bible says, this is what I love about the Bible. It's so specific into some of the things on what God wants to speak to us. The Bible says that when she returns, she stood by the doorway. And when she stands by the doorway, the word of the Lord is released over her life. 
Elijah doesn't come out, but Gehazi comes with the message. This is important. The man of God doesn't come out himself, but sends his servant. Go release this word over to her. And Gehazi says to the woman, we notice you don't have a child. So God says, the man of God says, the prophet of God says, that by this time next year, your heart's desires will be fulfilled. It was, it hit, it hit her so deep that she actually reacts to the word and says, oh, whoa, 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 don't you mess with me. Hold up, I thought you was good. No, 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 don't mess with me. Which indicates to us that her reaction was the true desire of her heart of prayers that were never answered. She had forgot about the dream of raising and nursing a child. She had forgotten about the things she so desired with her husband that she just kind of forgot and believed that God had forgot about all the dreams and the things that she had once prayed about. She was fine with not receiving it from God, but God said to her, even though you forgot, I haven't forgot. Even though your dreams are dead, my dreams for you have not died. So I'm here to let somebody know you didn't walk into church today. You walked into a doorway. You didn't walk. Oh, I'm here to let somebody know you didn't just walk into a building that's a hundred years old. You walked into a doorway today where something is about to shift. Something is about to change. There's some dead dreams that God is going to bring back to life. My God, there are some prayers God is going to release today. You've been faithful in the little I'm going to put you over much. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Come on, somebody that believes it today, you got to clap like something's about to shift. Oh, you're in the doorway. You're in the doorway. You're in the doorway. The word of God is coming over. The word of the Lord is hitting your spirit. The word of the Lord is going to impregnate you with the dream again. Oh, oh, she stood at the doorway. Oh, preacher, what are you talking about? Okay, let me explain what the doorway means. See, the spiritual meanings of doorways is that they're portals. They are transitions from one space and environment to another where things are about to move from one reality to the next. This is what the word of the Lord says to you. From one stage of the story to a whole new chapter. What cannot be done in the natural, the word of God will do supernaturally. The doorway was the place of transition for her. The Bible says she stood in the portal of where one reality was going to meet the next reality. Where one, one chapter of her life was going to end and the next chapter of her life was going to begin. This was the doorway. And when you stand at the doorway, the Bible says that one reality becomes another reality because what used to be will no longer be because you're getting ready to walk into the future that God really had for you today. This is why the word of the Lord is coming to you on this Mother's Day and letting you know every dream you had, every prayer that you prayed, every desire you had in your heart that you forgot about, God wanted me to remind you he hasn't forgotten about it yet and you're getting ready to transition. I said you're getting ready to transition and supernatural favor is about to hit your home. Your mother, your father, your children, your finances is about to shift. Your future is about to look better than you ever imagined. I wish I had a church that realizes we're about to shift into something supernatural.
Come on, clap. Come on, clap. I believe something's shifting in the spirit. I believe something's moving in the spirit. You're getting pregnant with purpose. You're getting pregnant with dreams. You're getting pregnant with business. You're getting pregnant with children. You're getting pregnant with something new. Somebody shout to God like you're ready to walk into it. He shifted. Oh, she... She got all mad. Don't you play with me. Don't you, don't, oh, you hit a nerve. Didn't I tell you I was good? I'm here to let you know God's not playing. He's in the business of blessing. I'm here to let you know God is not lying. You came today. You got all dressed up. Put on your pretty outfit to walk into a door. And and what's interesting is Elijah doesn't come out. Gehazi comes out. He's just a servant. He got the download from him and then he declares it over her. I'm not God. I'm just a mailman. And today I came with good news. Something's shifting in your family. I, I'm, like, I'm like that bonus check you get in the mail that nobody was expecting. I'm like that letter you get. I, I just came to get you a letter to let you know there's a message from heaven. Sons and daughters are coming home. I'm just, I downloaded a, and the Lord said, go give this to this side of the room. Financial blessing is about to break through over your family. I got like 30 people that believe it. Everybody else is like, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm here to let you, I'm, I'm delivering a letter that said the dream you forgot about, God hasn't forgotten about it, and you're about to get, walk into it. You, ne- you need a, if you, re- if you got that in the mail, you won't be acting like that. You'll be jumping, you'll be shouting, you've been calling, texting your friends, taking a picture saying, God did it. I know nobody else believed it. I know nobody else wa- was willing to believe with you, but God did. God did, and God says it's getting ready to happen. You're walking into it. This is how you walk into a miracle. You have to pursue his presence. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And the Bible says in all these things, shall be added unto you. Create a dwelling place for him. Lord, I desire your presence more than anything else. And when you do that, heaven says, what can I do for you now? I need, I need healing in my home, God. So you got it. I need, I need a financial breakthrough, God. You got it. I'm going to set you up with the right people. The next door you walk into, they're going to hold some keys. Those keys are going to open a gate that are going to introduce you to something new. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Go ahead. I got you. And the last thing you need to do is you need to get up and get to the doorway. Because it was at the doorway where everything changed for her. Pastor, how do I do that? Thanks for asking. I got an answer. Here's the answer. It's found, in, it's found in John chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And we'll go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I, 
says Jesus have come that you may have life and that you may have it in abundance can you stand with me today please how do I access this blessing you got to go to the door how do I access this blessing and favor you got to got to walk to the door because the door is what takes you from one reality to the next the door is what takes you from your past to a new future what are you needing God to do in your life God literally is asking you what can I do for you what can I do for you I want you to close your eyes for about 20 seconds. Just close your eyes right where you're at. God is asking, what can I do for you? Man? You've been faithful in the little, I'm going to put you over much, but you need to come. Jesus calls. And the Bible says that when she finally believed God a year later when Elijah comes back she's holding her son she's holding the dream that was dead she's holding the idea she had she's holding him in his arms can I let you know today that that's what God's doing in your life right now He's letting you know you're getting ready to hold and see the things that you forgot about, I didn't forget about them. So I'm here to let you know today that when I make this call right now, this isn't me calling you. This is God's voice saying, if you come to the doorway right now, you're going to enter from the reality you're in right now to a new reality. Maybe for you it's a sound mind. Lord, I, I've just been, my family's been in so much tur turmoil. I, just, I need a sound mind. You're going, you're going to enter into that rest now. Some of you just need peace in your home. You're going to enter into that peace. So is what we're going to do when I count to three. Like the Shunammite woman, she said she was good. Maybe you're saying, I'm good. I'm good, Pastor. I'm, I'm good. No, there's some things inside that God is saying, I want to touch you there. I want to speak into those things there. Maybe for you, it's hidden sin. Things you don't talk about, but God is saying, I want to deal with it now. Perhaps, perhaps it's depression and anxiety and you're... You're ashamed to say it. God is saying, I want to heal you today. I want, I want to walk you through that healing now. What do you need me to do for you? Maybe it's your marriage, but you don't want to talk about it. I'm here. The Holy Spirit is here saying, I want, I want, to, I want to speak into it, but you got to come to the doorway. So we're going to believe that this place up here in the front that we call the altar, that's your doorway. And he says, if you come to me, I'm going to give you life and life in abundance. So when I count to three, right now, if you have family, if you have somebody that you know, hey, we need to go up there. Things got to shift. Things got to change. We, we need God to do something in this area of our life. When I count to three, no shame, no guilt, nothing. I'm going to ask all the prayer team to please come up quickly. Prayer team, come up quickly. And there's men and women who are going to meet you here. There's men and women who are going to meet you here. We're going to pray with you. And we're going to believe that this is the moment where everything shifts. When I count to three, come. One, two, three. Why don't you come up? Come up now. Come up now. On this Mother's Day. Come